I'm about to jump into Costco where they have some really good gluten-free options. But I'm not just here to talk about gluten-free because it's a trend or it's a fad. Okay, it is near and dear to me. Okay, my wife is someone that's dealt with thyroid issues for a while. And if you know the whole shebang surrounding gluten and the thyroid, then you know what I'm talking about. But I'll give you a quick breakdown. What happens inside the body is we have to break down the proteins that are in gluten. It's gluten and gliadin. When we break those proteins down, sometimes we have what is called a Tgase 2 antibody. This Tgase 2 antibody comes in as a reaction of basically what's called a prolamin, breaking down the gluten. This Tgase 2 can leak into the bloodstream, and then what happens is it emulates a similar antibody called an anti-TPO antibody, which can affect the thyroid. So I'm not just someone that's here to talk about gluten-free because it's a trend or whatever. No, it really is important. If there's one thing that you can change in your dietary patterns, it probably is eliminating gluten. But Costco has leveled it up. They have a ton of really cool gluten-free snacks. So some of them have sugar, some of them don't. Some of them are really good for you, some of them are not. But I'm going to point out the best gluten-free options, or at least all the ones that I find. So let's head on into Costco and have some fun. Also, after this video, I want you to check out Thrive Market, if you haven't already. So Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store, but it would comes down to snack foods and anything that is really just a non-perishable, they are where you should go. So they deliver it right to your doorstep, it makes it super easy. They have a barcode scanner, so if you typically go into a store and you want to see if something is less expensive on Thrive, you can do so. But also, you can sort by diet. So what I mean by that is, if you wanted to select gluten-free options, you could do that. If you wanted to select keto options, you could do that. Paleo options, you can just select a box and that'll show you all the food items that are within that given category. And then you can just have them shipped directly to your doorstep. So super easy, super convenient, and there's a link down below for you to check them out. And that way you can also get a free gift when you use that link and utilize Thrive Market. So let's go ahead, let's head into Costco, see what we can find. Okay, so tortilla strips or tortilla chips are always gonna be gluten-free, but does it mean that it's something that you should really be getting? So they've got these organic tortilla chips I'm gonna show you right now. We'll figure it out. Okay, they look like this. Whenever you're going to have any kind of grain, you really do want to be leaning into the organic. Here's the thing. Gluten-free, but sunflower oil. Not exactly what I want to have in there. Is it going to be gluten-free? Yeah, totally. You could eat this if you were trying to avoid gluten. But then we also have the corn in there, which is still a grain. And believe it or not, sometimes grains can still trigger that same Tgase 2 antibody and I may sound like a crazy person when I say this, but it really is important. What that means is that sometimes, even if you're sensitive to gluten, you can be sensitive to other grains too. There's a prolamin response, which means that sometimes it still triggers that same Tgase response. And you won't know what that feels like. It doesn't always feel like a typical celiac type response. It can feel like just fatigue or brain fog, and it's a real thing. Anyhow, let's get to some other food. We've got these late July jalapeno lime. These are still going to be gluten-free, still the same concept, organic whole grain corn, sunflower oil. This one's just got a bunch of other stuff in it. So yes, technically gluten-free, but I would probably steer clear from it. Again, probably some different options that you can find. And then we move right along, we actually see this food should taste good, organic tortilla chips, which are quite a bit cheaper too, $4.89. Multi-grain, what does it mean by that? See, in this case, we still have corn. Okay, we have high oleic sunflower oil, which is a little bit better. Brown rice flour, flax seeds, sesame seeds. Okay, this is definitely better, but let me explain what the high oleic really means. The high oleic does not mean that it has more oleic acid in it. It doesn't, well, in a way it does, but it doesn't get you the benefit of oleic acid. All high oleic sunflower oil is, is means they've just consolidated the oleic acid in it to make it more shelf stable. It's a little bit more of a stable fat, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get the health benefit of oleic acid, but it doesn't make anything better or worse per se. It just makes it more shelf stable. So in this case, I would consider this organic food should taste good product, not bad. At least they're taking one step up so that the sunflower oil doesn't go rancid. And it's a pretty darn good price. So if you're not really watching you know, your diet, but you are gluten-free, then that would be a good alternative to like a regular chip. 4505, definitely a tremendous gluten-free snack. Again, if you're keto or if you're not, still a great thing to get if you're gluten-free. Okay, thing I like about 4505, fried pork skin, salt, a little bit of coconut sugar, but it's such a small amount, doesn't even add a carb. Okay, really, clean stuff as far as being rendered in pork fat too so no weird oils in there they're definitely something you'd want to have if you're watching carbs 
not a bad price either. What about having like pirate's booty popcorn? Okay, you wanna know something interesting about popcorn? Okay, this, this stuff. Okay, so popcorn is still obviously a corn kernel, but it's been puffed and it's been heated. So that makes it very high glycemic. And then this one combines it with a bunch of fat. So I'll explain something. We have cornmeal, rice flour, sunflower oil, expeller pressed canola oil. So we have not only basically a very high glycemic carbohydrate, but we also have really cruddy oil. And we also have some natural flavoring in there. That stuff's not too big of a deal. We also have rice flour in there. So yes, it's gluten-free, but I would not really be munching on this. Even though the price is right, there's better options and we'll get to them. Leads me to these popcorners. It's kind of cool. Okay, so if you look at comparatively the popcorners to that Pirate's Booty popcorn, I would go for the popcorners between those two. And I'll show you what that looked like. So this is $5.99 for a 20 ounce bag. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is kettle corn flavor, which is going to have some sugar in it. So this is gonna be a little bit of a different ball game because this is yellow corn, sunflower oil, cane sugar, and salt. But it's not much, it's only three grams of sugar. So we have, let's see, four grams of fat for, let's see, 17 chips, 28 grams, 120 calories, four grams of fat. Compare that to 28 grams, six grams of fat, 19 grams of carbs, only one gram of sugar, but we have less calories here. We have a couple more carbs and we have less fat. I would honestly opt for this and get something that tastes a little bit better in that case. At a certain point, you do need to start looking at just how many ingredients are in something. If there's less ingredients in something, it's probably gonna be a better option too. Okay, I just found some other chips that could be interesting. I haven't seen these before. These are called Crunch Master. Um, they look like this. Let's flip the camera around in a second. Looks like these are certified gluten-free, which could be kind of interesting. Let's see. So this is the 6.79. So it's a three dollar savings right now. Crunch Master multi grain. First ingredient is brown rice flour. Okay, that's typical in a gluten-free product. Sesame seeds, potato starch, safflower oil. Okay, at least it has flax seeds, quinoa seeds, amaranth, chia seeds, millet, tamari. So they're not even using gluten there which unfortunately has soybeans in it, but it's not that big of a deal in this case. You're not soy oil. The problem with soy comes from the soybean oil, not from the soy itself. It doesn't look like it's organic, so it's probably heavily GMO soy, which is like 98% of the soy. Hey, this is not bad though. I mean, five grams of fat. The macronutrient profile, I wouldn't consider it a healthy food, but it's probably one of the better gluten-free options we've come across yet. This and the pork rind so far are the best gluten-free options I've found. Let's go ahead and see what else we can find. Okay, now we've got the Simple Mills Almond Flour Crackers. These are kind of cool. Ooh, yes, I have seen these before. I've talked about them. Check it out. Okay, it looks like this. It's $8.99 for 17 ounces. So it's a bit spendy, a little bit pricey, but let's see what's in it. Nut and seed flour blend. So almonds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, tapioca starch, cassava flour, sunflower oil, a little bit of a bummer. Sea salt, organic onion, organic garlic, and rosemary extract. So it's not fully organic, but they're definitely putting their best foot forward. Corn-free, grain-free, paleo-friendly. So any kind of gluten-free option that you're looking for, you're best off trying to find things that are paleo-friendly too, because it means it's going to be totally grain-free. And it's gonna just be mostly whole earth ingredients. So I really like seeing that kind of stuff. So this is definitely a win too. In fact, I would take this product over the multi-grain baked crackers because it doesn't at least have the grains. This is grain-free, granted a lot more expensive, but still good. All right, so we've got Archer, Country Archer. These are gluten-free and surprisingly pretty clean. Grass-fed beef, encapsulated lactic acid, red pepper, black pepper, these are clean. And the reason I point this out is because usually, like look at this, the Pacific Gold ones, beef, brown sugar, Walt, uh, <laughs> Walt, <laughs> water, salt, beef stock, Okay, this one does not have gluten in it, surprisingly. Uh, what about this one? The steak strips. Ooh, sodium nitrites. We do not want to have the nitrites unless they're coming from an already uh, natural source. So out of all the jerkies that are gluten-free in this one, see, like, this doesn't say gluten-free anywhere on it, which kind of concerns me. But this one is definitely gonna be the simplest option. Just jerky is tricky because it's either got preservatives, nitrites, or you're gonna end up finding all kinds of weird forms of soy and gluten in it. Then we have this Larissa's Kitchen, which, let's see, water, cane sugar, soybeans, ooh. It has soy sauce in it, but at least is uh, gluten-free soy sauce. So we're not gonna get 
that, but it's got quite a bit of carbs in it. So let's pass that. The Korean barbecue has got a lot of sugar. What's this? This is a new one. Usually I'm not the biggest fan of turkey jerky. I like turkey sticks because turkey jerky is usually pretty tough. But like if you're doing any kind of intermittent fasting regimen or anything, an on the go snack would be turkey jerky because you really want to break your fast with thiamine, uh, which is vitamin B1, helps support that gut mucosal layer. So basically what happens is while you are fasting, you get depleted in your B1 levels. It just happens through just various gluconeogenesis processes. So if you're doing any kind of lower calorie protocol, even fasting or just anything that's lower calorie, you can expect your B1 levels to drop a little bit. What ends up happening is your gut mucosal layer in your gut, your gut lining, contains a lot of your B1 to feed your microbiome. Your microbiome eats vitamin B1, it's kind of wild. And then what'll happen is your microbiome will come in and it'll eat a lot of that B1 when you are deficient in it while you are calorically deprived. So it breaks down your gut mucosal layer. So I usually say when you're consuming, uh, when you're on a low calorie protocol or you're doing intermittent fasting, you usually want to have some kind of snack like turkey jerky that's going to be rich in thiamine. As far as ingredients, so this is what it looks like. Country Archer organic turkey jerky. It's great because turkey is usually a little bit dirty, so I'm glad it's organic. Organic turkey breast meat, tamari soy sauce, which is gluten free. I'm sure there's a little, uh, yeah, a little bit of brown sugar in there, but it's still only four grams of carbs per serving, which is pretty reasonable. So that's cool. I'm going to get one of those. That's awesome to see. Okay. So then we have plantain chips. Now here's the thing. If you're really paying attention to your gut microbiome, or you're trying to rebuild your gut mucosal layer, you want to pay attention to things like plantain chips, literally looking at unripe bananas, things like that, because they do help build that microbiome a lot. Additionally, things like artichokes, because we can get that long chain inulin, which really does benefit our gut bacteria. They digest very slow. Now, you'll see there's a lot of research surrounding green banana flour because it really is like a literal, like just gut microbial feeder. Like it's a great fertilizer for your gut. Well, plantains do the same kind of thing. You just have to, have to eat more of them. But I want to check this product out. Out of all the gluten-free snacks, I really like this one. Okay, because check out the ingredients on it. Okay, it's these Barnana plantain chips. We have plantains, coconut oil, and Himalayan pink salt. So plantains are already so low glycemic. They're not going to spike your insulin. You're not going to get a negative effect with them too much. And then you have coconut oil, which is a nice antimicrobial, but also lauric acid, which is the C12 carbon chain fat that is in coconut oil, is tremendous for your gut. So I really love seeing this. I'm going to grab these up. These are great. I love having them around. Like my kiddos love them. They're a great little snack. And then we move right into this roasted kale. This is kind of cool. Check this out. $7.99 for this Rhythm Superfoods Organic Roasted Kale. Pretty stoked to see that. Now, in the spirit of talking about the thyroid, cruciferous veggies are not bad for the thyroid. Somewhere out there, someone started a thing that if <laughs> you eat cruciferous veggies like kale and broccoli, it's bad for your thyroid. It's not. There is a problem here, though. Uh, I don't like the fact that it has sunflower oil in it probably not going to get that because of that, but I wouldn't hold that that holds you back. Like if you really like kale snacks, but I have had this brand before and I have to be totally candid with you on something. It has a pretty aggressively bitter aftertaste and that's just me, but kale chips are already a little bit tough to get down. I would usually opt for seaweed snacks instead. This is just me, but hopefully we can find something I can show you. Chickpea snacks. Check that out. I think I just found a cool new find. Vienna organic sea salt chickpeas. Come on, don't let me down. Yes, check it out. Organic chickpeas, organic avocado oil, and sea salt. We are in business. I am so getting some of those. Even if you are on keto, you could still have a little bit of those. Chickpeas contain a very specific kind of fiber that once again is really good for the gut, but they also contain something that helps gene expression for helping us rebuild our gut. So it triggers the genes to kind of activate to allow us to start rebuilding our gut wall, which is so important, especially when you're looking at the world of gluten and we're looking at TGA's two antibodies that leak through the bloodstream via separation in that those tight junctions, those you know epithelial cells, the enterocytes. We don't want those to be loose junctions. We want them to be tight junctions to prevent antibodies from leaking through. In this case, we look at things like these chickpea snacks that could have a good potential of rebuilding our gut wall. Super important. Ooh, beets. That's an interesting one. I'll talk about this in another video. Just so you know, like these are a great little snack. 
I would recommend those on keto or not on keto. They're just a great little snack. They wouldn't really call them like a gluten-free snack. They are gluten-free, but they're not a typical snack. But put them in your salads. They have these little like packets. Like they come in like individual packets that are super ready to eat and easy. I got a big old box of these at home too. Not a bad price either. I'm finding a lot of cool things though. Check this out. Organic coconut, just one ingredient unsweetened, unsulfured. A lot of times with dried fruit, if you ever notice when you eat dried fruit, you get really stinky smelling gas. It's because they put sulfur in a lot of it. In this case, we just have one ingredient, organic coconut. Look at the fiber content there. Seven grams of carbs, five of which is fiber. This is a tremendous keto snack as well as just a regular gluten-free snack. So really cool to see that. In fact, I'm gonna get those because I could love to put that in my yogurt. I love stuff like that. These coconut keto clusters, uh, I've talked about them in many of my keto hauls. They definitely are gluten-free. As a matter of fact, they're pretty darn good. They just have a little bit of cane sugar in them, which kind of frustrates me. So it's a little bit of a keto imposter, but coconut, pumpkin seeds, pecans, almonds, cane sugar, brown rice syrup, coconut butter, erythritol, flax seeds, sea salt, agave, natural flavor. It frustrates me, why put cane sugar in there when you already have erythritol? You've already sweetened it with erythritol. Why do you need to add sugar too and just increase the carb content? There's no real need. What's well, kind of funny, I always look at this. Do you ever notice this at Costco? Check this out. One of my favorite things to do is to look at what people abandon to get something else. So somewhere along the line, someone thought that putting this product back and getting this was gonna be better. I would have begged to differ. I think this product's better. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, coconut chips, almonds, pecans, erythritol, monk fruit extract, butter, blueberries, cinnamon, salt. No sugar, no weird stuff. They put that one back to get this one. Probably because it just looks like this one is gonna be tastier. I mean, I don't know. I think this one nailed the packaging more, but this product is actually better. It's kind of funny. So start paying attention to that. When you go to Costco, just notice like, what do people abandon and what are they getting instead? It's kind of funny. It's an interesting thing. You'll notice a lot of really wild stuff making it quick here. Look at, we've got the macadamia nuts, which are definitely a good gluten-free snack. Out of all these nuts, all the ones that are here, I would definitely recommend the macadamia nuts. In fact, I'm gonna get some of those because we definitely could use some of these. Always could use those. I just stumbled across a new gluten-free bread. Let's check this out. Bee-free, gluten-free white loaf. Hmm, looks like this. Decent price, that's a big loaf. You get a lot there. And what do we have in the way of ingredients here? Same usual, white rice flour, cornstarch, psyllium. I like this, okay, at least, it's, I mean, it's, okay, with gluten-free bread, you're generally going to have, you're gonna have grains in it, you just are. You're going to have just good old-fashioned rice flour, but I like they have the psyllium in there. That drives up the fiber content a little bit and slows down the digestion so that it's not quite as high glycemic. Whenever you mix a high glycemic carbohydrate, like a grain, rice, anything like that, or white bread, anything like that, if you add fiber to it, it's gonna slow down the blood sugar spike. So that's a plus. It's actually a better, a better gluten-free bread out there. It's still gonna have the grains, of course. We already talked about that one when we saw someone had abandoned it. Grain-free granola. Okay, we've got this Autumn's Gold, which I've talked about before, is a great product as a gluten-free item. Let's see, almonds, organic honey, pecans, toasted coconut, sunflower seeds, coconut, coconut oil. Yeah, this is a great product. I mean, it's not keto at all, but if you're looking for a gluten-free cereal or something, hands down, this Autumn's Gold is one of the best ones out there. I don't need the sugar in the house. I'm already getting a few things, but really cool stuff there. I like seeing that. That's it for the gluten-free snacks. I'm sure I could have found some more gluten-free stuff here in the store overall, but I wanted to leave it with just the snacks so that we could really have a little bit of time to go into this in detail versus making this an hour long video where I break down everything. So hey, if there's different hauls that you wanna see me do specifically at Costco, like hey, maybe do a meat haul or maybe do a different kind of haul, please do comment down below because I have to listen to you. Your feedback is what drives this. Okay, a lot of people ask for a gluten-free haul and here I am filming it, okay? I just need you to comment down below what you wanna see in the future, okay? Please don't forget to check out Thrive Market and don't forget to check out this channel daily when we have new videos dropping all the time. Okay, I'm gonna go check out and I'll see you soon. See, I do buy the stuff. I always leave comments and say, I bet he just ditches the cart and doesn't buy the stuff. Why would I not do that? They're letting me film there. Anyway, I don't know why you always say that. See you tomorrow. Also, don't be lazy. Put the cart back. Be a kind human being.